So as you can see, literally gone, like this powder is literally magic. It's and welcome to today's video where I will be showing you my all powder foundation routine slash all powder makeup look. This is a look that I find myself doing so much more often now, especially because we're wearing masks all the times. I just feel like the powders sit better under masks and don't transfer nearly as much as creams and liquids. So if you're interested to see what products I use to get this look, then let's get started. Okay, so let's start with primers. Now, the way you prime your skin for a powder foundation versus a liquid foundation is very different. To be honest with you, you don't really need to worry as much about the primer in my opinion. For example, for liquid foundations, I always like to go in with like a pore minimizing primers, but for powder foundations, they tend to have already sort of like that blurring type of effect on the skin. So you don't really have to use those, but I do like to go in with something nice and hydrating. So these two are awesome options. The Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Space, or pretty much a dupe for that is the Good Molecule Silicone Free Priming Moisturizers. These are primers that are just very similar to regular hydrating moisturizers and they don't leave any type of like tacky residue on the skin. They kind of just soak into the skin, which is really what you want. Even if your skin is really dry, you're not gonna wanna go in with a primer that leaves sort of like a glowy finish. One of my favorite hydrating primers of all time is the Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum, but something like this is not gonna work for a powder foundation because it's sort of like an oil base. It leaves like this glow, and the problem with the powder is that the powder is not gonna sit on top of that nicely, and it's not gonna buff into the skin nicely when it has something underneath that's sort of like building a barrier, if that makes sense. So that's not gonna work. But to be honest, most of the time, I do prefer to go in with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. This is an awesome primer. I wait for it to dry completely down. It's really nice and hydrating, but like I said, it soaks right into the skin. It doesn't leave any type of film, any type of barrier, if you will. And like I said, it's just nice and hydrating. So then I'll just allow that to fully, fully dry down. So the stars of today's video will be the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Powders. These are incredible, incredible, incredible. I absolutely love this powder foundation. It is full coverage. It is not drying on the skin at all. And it's literally great for any type of skin. And even if you have dry skin, you will love these. But before I get into the powder foundation, I wanna do two optional steps. So the first optional step I'm going in with is a concealer. So obviously a liquid concealer is not gonna sit on top of a powder foundation correctly. So I like to go in with this first, but this is optional. If you're doing sort of like a more natural makeup look, you may not need this, but I want to show this anyways in case you have really bad dark circles because although the powder is full coverage, something like dark circles, something where you have like blueness, this is not really going to cover that. So I'm just going to go in with a small amount and I'm basically just putting the concealer everywhere I would normally. So that's the sides of my nose and then just a little bit underneath my eyes. I also like to bring it right here because I have a lot of blueness right in there. So I'm just gonna blend that out as I normally would. And I am taking any extra I have on my eyelid just to prime my eyelids. I'm not gonna do anything crazy with the eyes. I'm just gonna do just like a natural everyday eye, but I might as well prime the eyelids while I have the concealer on my face. So there's the concealer and I am just gonna bake it just a tiny bit with the hourglass powder because since I'm putting the concealer on first under my under eyes, I'm not really planning to be applying the powder foundation at all over here. I'll probably just blend out over here with the powder foundation, but I don't necessarily intend to take the powder foundation and put it all over my under eye and sort of like cover up that concealer, if that makes sense. The second totally optional step that I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna cream contour my nose. So I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty Tantor in the shade Light. I'm doing this because I really like sort of a I don't want to say dark or unnatural type of nose contour, but I just find that when I do the cream and then I do a powder contour over, it just looks much better than when I just do a powder contour on my nose. And you can do this for your whole face as well. This cream works really well under the powder foundation, which I'll show you. I just apply the cream contour. Now I'm going to go in with this Morphe M173 brush. It's just a really nice buffing brush. So I'm just going to buff that in. I'm also gonna go in with my sponge. 
It obviously looks very dark now because when I usually apply this, I usually have a foundation underneath. But once we put the powder on top of it, it'll look much more blended. Now I'm just gonna buff in that powder bake, put it on my eyelids as well, and just press it into the skin. All right, awesome. Now we are finally ready to go in with the powders. I have shades Y365, which is this more tan shade, and Y355. Um, I probably more Y355, but I noticed that Y355 has more of like a pinky undertone, so I think I'm gonna mix these. Now, as you can see, they do come with this like velvet applicator. It's actually very similar to this velvet powder real technique sponge, but I prefer to go in with a very big brush. So this brush is incredible. This brush definitely sort of changes the game when it comes to this foundation because I've recommended this foundation to a lot of people and they start using the sponge and they're like, Esty, what are you talking about? This foundation is like not natural at all on the skin. You can like clearly see the powder. So this brush is a must. This is an A Cosmetics brush. I believe it's the 211, but I'll obviously link it down below in the description box. But this brush is a must. It's a expensive but let me tell you it's fluffy it's massive and I've had this for probably five or six years and it's just incredible so like I said I am gonna mix both of these shades a little bit but I am gonna go in more with the Y355 I'm gonna tap it off and then I'm just gonna go in circular motions and apply this now when you're applying it this way you're probably like, SC, this is not full coverage. What are you saying? But just wait, just gotta wait. One thing I like to do with liquid foundations that I obviously can't do with powder foundations is I always like to warm it up on the back of my hand. So I'll always sort of like pump it and then I'll go in with my fingers and warm up that foundation. So when I apply it to my face, it just applies much more seamlessly. Obviously with powder foundations, you can't do that. But I noticed from going in with this technique, just swirling and buffing, it almost does a similar thing where the swirling, the buffing motion is warming it up to the skin. And I'm just gonna sort of dust it under my eyes. I'm not getting like super close to my under eye, but I do just wanna buff it so it matches. And then I'm also going to just sort of dab this on to my nose. So here's the powder. My skin is looking really, really nice. What I really like about this Makeup Forever powder is that my skin, although it's looking pretty matte because it is a powder foundation, it's not looking flat at all. You can still see here like this sort of shine coming through. So obviously, sorry about my nails, you can still see these two blemishes I have over here. I have a scar over here you can see, and you can see this blemish. So the next thing that I do is I always go in with a buffing brush. This is the same Morphe M173 that I use for my nose contour. This is just a clean one. I have multiple of the same brush. So what I'm gonna do now is dip into the powder, get it really on that brush, but I am going to tap out. Let me move you guys in a little closer to these friends over here, like why, how? And I'm literally just going to tap the powder in. Did you see that? It literally disappeared, disappears, and it doesn't make the skin look like powdery or dry either, it is insane. Okay, let me zoom you guys out. Now I'll do the scarring on this side. Now I'm gonna do this little spot on my chin. So as you can see, literally gone. Like this powder is literally magic, it's gone. And what's crazy about this powder is that although I did put like a hefty amount of powder on those specific spots, it doesn't look like there's powder on the skin, it's crazy. So what I like to do after this, because I find that sometimes when I pack the powder on, you, you can sort of like see the powder more onto the skin. I like to go in with just a tiny bit more with the big fluffy brush. And this time I really try to just tap it out. And then I'll sort of just go in like that and just tap it all in. So that is it for the actual powder foundation. Now, if your skin is looking dry, if it's feeling dry, don't worry, because we are gonna go in with a really nice and hydrating, fine setting mist to sort of melt everything in. But before we do that, I obviously wanna finish the rest of the face. So I already went in with my concealer, but if you don't wanna do a liquid concealer, something that I really like to do is go in with a nice brightening powder. So usually I'll go in, I'll put the powder foundation under my eyes, buff it in, but not be too heavy with it. And then I'll go in with a nice 
nice brightening powder. So my favorites would be the KKW brightening powder and I absolutely love this Morphe palette. This is the Morphe Face Palette in 8M. The brightening powder in here is amazing. So I'm gonna go in with this Morphe one. I'm using a Morphe E48 brush. Tap that out. And I'm gonna go in right in the under eye area. I don't know if the camera's picking it up too well, but this under eye is definitely brighter than this under eye. It's not like a crazy brightening. You're not gonna get that type of brightening from when you're like baking your under eye like that, but it is going to give you that brightening effect overall. Next up, I'm gonna go in with my bronzer and my contour, and I'm just gonna use this same Morphe palette. I'm just gonna apply the bronzer exactly like I normally would. With bronzers anyways, you can see I'm kind of tapping it on. I'm not swirling it on. I just like to do that anyways, even when I'm using a liquid foundation. I just find that when I tap it on, I'm not moving any of the foundation underneath and everything tends to stay more in place. I'm also gonna go back into the brightener and just clean up here a little bit. Next up, I'm gonna powder contour just a little bit. I'm going in with the contour shade on this NARS brush. I believe this is like their Eda brush. It's like their very famous brush. I don't know. I'm gonna go in a little bit here and just a little bit on my nose. Before I move on to blush, I did want to give a quick shout out to the Hourglass Ambient Powders. These are beautiful and these are great when using with powder foundation because they are nice and luminous. So this one is Radiant Bronze Light. I'm just going to take a little bit of it, tap it out, and I'm just going to put it on my forehead, basically on top of everywhere else that I applied my bronzer just to bring some radiance back into the skin. Next up, I'm gonna go in with blush. I'm using the Patrick Ta Double Take Creme and Powder Blush, and this is just a perfect plush for a powder foundation because you're supposed to use the powder blush before you go in with the cream blush so your skin has that luminosity. So this is basically perfect. So with my blush brush, I am gonna go in to the powder first and just apply that. I also have the berry shade but I don't know, today I'm feeling just like a really natural type of bronzy look. So I'm just gonna use this bronze shade. And I'm just gonna go in with my finger, swirl that cream, and just apply it. What I'm also trying to show in this video is that although we're doing a powder foundation, we don't need to look matte, we don't need to look flat, we can still bring that beautiful glow back into the skin. I'm gonna go in with the stippling brush, this is the ColourPop F9 brush, and just blend this in. So as you can see, this blush is very bronzy, and it doesn't look like this in the pan, but on that face, it definitely has sort of like a pinky red undertone which I really, really love. For highlight, I'm just gonna go in with my favorite powder highlight, which is this Dior Backstage Palette. It is just so beautiful. And I'm gonna go in with this gold shade and just apply that right here, just a little bit. So for the last step of the face, before I move on to the eyes and my brows and my lips, I am going to set everything. I'm going to melt all the powders into the skin, but to be honest, to me, I don't even think my skin looks powdery. This foundation is just incredible. But anyways, there's three setting sprays that I wanted to recommend. So the first one I'm gonna recommend, which is what I'm gonna use today, which I am obsessed with, is the Patrick Ta Major Glow Dewy Milk Mist. I'm obsessed with this stuff, it is just amazing. And then two other options that I have that are a little bit less expensive are the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Face Mist and the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. All three of these mists have really, really nice fine misters and they will just melt all the powders into the skin beautifully. Like I said, I am going to go in with the Patrick Ta. It's just my favorite at the moment. I just love how incredibly super, super fine the mist is and you really don't need a lot of this. And then of course, So I just did my brows off camera and for the eyes, I'm just gonna do something super duper simple. I feel like my everyday eye look is something just like a one and done shadow type of thing. So I'm just gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. This is the shade Oyster Pearl. I'm just gonna apply that with my finger. And then I'm just gonna go in with this Morphe 511 and just buff it in and just smooth it out a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go in with my favorite, my ColourPop Going Coconuts palette. I'm just gonna dip into the Colada shade and just put that in my crease. 
I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush, take that same Kulata shade, and just put it underneath a little. And I'm gonna go back in with my Dior palette and just take this gold shade. I'm gonna put that in my inner corner. I'm also going to lightly highlight the brow bone with that as well. Next, I'm gonna go in with my makeup by Mario Master Pigment Pro Pencil in the Perfect Brown. This is the one that comes with the brush on the other side and I'm obsessed with this. I'm just going to apply this, not anything precise as you can see. And then I'm gonna take the brush and just smudge and wing that out a little bit. So you can see it just created this really smudged out baby type of wing, which I love. And I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm just gonna curl my lashes and go in with my favorite Essence Lash Princess Mascara. And then for my lips, I'm gonna go in with my favorite combo at the moment, the Morphe Sweet Tea Lip Liner and the Patrick Ta Oh, she's single lipstick. All right, here is the finished look. Like I said, although I used all powders, you can't even tell. If you were to see me in person, you would think that I was wearing a normal liquid foundation. Everything just blends into the skin so nicely. And like I said, that Makeup Forever powder is just a 10 out of 10. I highly, highly, highly recommend you pick it up. So if you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye.